<laughs> okay, so. Uh, I was just looking through Twitter the other day, and I was working on some of my other scripted videos, and I wanted to sit and have a chat about something that I saw. I guess there was an article about uh, Bill Gates saying no to the idea of releasing the formulas and patents to the COVID vaccine to poor countries, because I don't know if you know this, there are some countries that have less material wealth than the United States and uh, some European nations that are struggling to uh, make enough vaccines to properly vaccinate their uh, populace against COVID-19. This is to be expected, you know, I don't think that anyone thought Bill Gates was going to let go of an opportunity to make more money. But ultimately, I think what we can explore is the colonial mindset that he's espousing. We already knew he was an oligarch. We already knew that he was a patent troll. We already knew that he was a ferociously corporate opportunist. But right now... But right now, he is showing his true colors. He is basically a modern age colonizer, both in tech and uh, in geography and in patents. And he's, he's showing his colors, honestly. The mask is pretty much slipping with Bill Gates. He wanted to suggest that the reason they don't release the formulas is because these countries have some form of subpar manufacturing for the uh, vaccines. He's saying these facilities are going to be making bad vaccines or tainted vaccines or suboptimal vaccines and he doesn't want those being distributed. This isn't even new with him. He actually is responsible due to his invasion into malaria efforts on the African continent for a lot of people dying because of how much he hemmed up real localized organizations trying to treat uh, things like HIV and malaria on the continent. I made a tweet, though, a while ago that really blew up on Twitter, talking about how quickly you could get someone who was seemingly reasonable to uh, align themselves with the philosophy of colonialism just by suggesting that you think the stolen artifacts, culture, and history that are sitting in museums in Europe and the Americas be returned to those cultures they were taken from. People will bend over backwards to defend it because just as they think those artifacts and those cultures and those items that they stole are theirs and should be there for their enjoyment, they think that these countries don't have the ability to produce solid quality vaccines for their people, just like they don't have the ability to protect these artifacts and cultures. They, they will say that they're, they want to preserve history and that this history won't be safe in the hands of the people it was taken from. That's honestly a bit of a flawed argument because I don't really care if they can take care of it or not. If you want to return the heads of statues that French soldiers sawed off of Vietnamese monuments to the, Viet the Vietnamese people, and they want to take a hammer to all of them, that's their choice. It's theirs. Just like if we return Mount Rushmore or the Black Hills to the indigenous people it was taken from, I don't care if they take dynamite to Mount Rushmore. Who cares? It's theirs to determine. All right, we can pretend to cut them all the checks we want. We can act like we're preserving history all we want. It's theirs, it's not ours, it's stolen land, it's stolen artifacts. But to get off of that tangent, man, I need to focus. It's a beautiful day today. So that same mindset extends to right now what Bill Gates is doing with the vaccines and why he's pushing to hold on to these patents. I mean, that and the thirst for profits. It's always been about the thirst for profits for him and his long, long vampiric life. And the defense he's making is, oh, we can't trust them with these formulas because they're going to make bad vaccines. They're not going to take the right steps to take care of their own people. This is a, a terribly flawed mindset, but I'm going to explore it from their stance, from their point of view. Okay, he's saying they're 
manufacturing facilities are overburdened. They're currently operating above capacity. This could make for flawed vaccines. They're not being careful with it. Okay, that's not an argument to not release the formulas. That's an argument to break off some of your monumentous wealth that far surpasses that of some of these nations and provide them with the facilities they need. If you are such the philanthropist that you just want to help people all over the world, including in developing nations, then why don't you actually help give them the means of production? Why don't you actually help them have the means to make and buy their own mosquito nets, to mine and own the means of production of their own coltan and rare earth minerals, you know, to make their own shoes, if you will, to catch their own fish. Instead of holding on to it and piecemealing it out, as you, the righteous capitalist, only know how. See, it, it falls apart really quickly when we talk about that, and we can use this as a lesson. My dogs are barking. It's hard to record, but it's such a beautiful day. Can we do YouTube outside today? <laughs> Anyway, there's a lesson we can take from this and apply it towards mutual aid, right? If somebody's hungry and they have nothing, you know, they don't even have what we would call viable shelter, it does nothing for me to drop off a pallet of raw, un uh, unrefrigerated meat uh, at their front door. They have no means to cook it. They have no means to store it. I have to find a way to get them a freezer. I need to find a way to get them a oven. I need to find a way to get them vacuum sealing or some kind of storage to safely use that meat and turn it into food and sustenance for people. And that's what we should be working to provide. That's the essence of direct action and mutual aid. That's the lesson that we can take from this, is that what they're doing is denying people the actual means to provide for their own people and instead forcing them to play into the profit motive of these corporations. This is why Bill Gates pushed those corporations to not release the patents of the vaccines. And all of the people supporting this, meanwhile, wringing their hands and talking about how these poor nations just can't catch up. Like, there are primarily black nations right now that have yet to receive any vaccines from the global community. I mean, if you think about it, uh, first of all, you have to be able to wade through a lot of Western propaganda in the first place to see where some of these claims that these countries aren't capable of producing vaccines for their people are coming from. Uh, people who were alive in the 90s, like myself, could tell you there was tons and tons and tons of uh, propaganda about Cuba being some underdeveloped, dirty hellhole. And yet, to this day, they are a net exporter of vaccines. They actually manufacture and export vaccines to other parts of the world to help other people. But you will see the capitalists defending the right to not make medicine freely available to those who need it. And know this. Our refusal, or excuse me, Bill Gates' refusal and all of these corporations' refusal to make these vaccine formulas available to the global community and forcing it to become a, a race to the finish by a bunch of different private entities absolutely led to more deaths. It absolutely delayed the vaccine. Think about what we could have done if we had the research power of the entire world's medical community behind developing this vaccine and they could actually freely share that information. We have seen online the true power of crowdfunding and crowdsourcing. Imagine if we could crowdsource from the medical community the ways to prevent these horrible diseases and there's going to be more pandemics going forward. Uh, many experts know that pandemics are just a generation away. There, there'll be another one and there'll be another one after that. And it, it's killing people right now, our current mode. So 
like I said before, I guess the only call to action I would have, you know, I, I, I'm not able to really inspire people to open a vaccine manufacturing facility in their backyard. That's not something we're really capable of. But as you look at the issues in your communities, as you're going out trying to empower your communities and trying to enrich your communities at the local level, look at the means that they have first. Do they have the means to utilize the help that they're receiving? And if not, then that's where your efforts should be focused. After all, you can't cook unless you have a stove. You can't cook without fire, so maybe what the first thing that person needs is a fire. I don't know, that's all I had. Um, I'm working on more scripted videos, so I'll have some better edited stuff out there soon. But uh, it was a nice day, and I wanted to talk about that. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, click subscribe and like and uh, comment your thoughts on this. And uh, if you like, I do have a Patreon. Feel free to support it. Uh, thanks again.